Hi, so in this video I'm going to compare and contrast verbs in Spanish and French. So this video is for um, people who have a background in one language and want to start learning the other, or people who are beginners in both and want to uh, review and consolidate their knowledge. So let's start from the basics. In Spanish there are three categories of verbs. There are AR verbs, like the verb comparar, to compare. There are ER verbs, like the verb perder, to lose, and there are IR verbs, like the verb venir. Now, these three categories have rough equivalents in French, and these are interesting to notice because, and also helpful because if you only know how to say a word in Spanish and you need to guess, you can use these patterns as a guideline to, to <coughs> guide um, your guesses. So. AR verbs roughly correlate to ER verbs in French. So in French, comparar becomes comparer, to compare. Perder, ER verbs roughly corre correlate with RE verbs. So perder becomes perdre, right? That's an R. And IR verbs in Spanish become IR verbs in French. So it actually, this is the same in French. This is just venir. So it's interesting to note these um, patterns and how these categories in Spanish correlate to categories in French too. Now I want to talk about some verb trends in these two languages. So the first trend I want to talk about is verbs that end in ver in Spanish. For example, ver, which means to see, mover, which is to move, and promover, oh, promover which is to promote. Now these actually have quite um, exact equivalents in French, which are verbs that end in voir, such as voir, which is to see, same as ver. Mouvoir, which is to move, although you may hear something more common like bouger. And then there's promouvoir for, um, which means to promote. Right, so these are actually quite um, stunningly similar. Uh, so this correlation is also quite useful to know. Say you only know how to say um, mover in Spanish, but you know that voir is ver. So you can guess that mover is mouvoir, right? So knowing these patterns is, I think they're quite interesting and they can also help you in uh, language production. So another similar type of correlation I want to uh, share with you are verbs that end in ser in Spanish, like nacer, to be born, parecer, to appear or seem, and conocer, to know or to be familiar with. So all these end in ser. The French equivalent of nacer, to be born, is naître. Parecer is paraître, connaître is connaître, right? So you can see the CR becomes this être ending, right? So say you know that connaître is connaître, but you don't know how to say to be born, but you know that in Spanish it's nacer. So by following the same pattern, you can guess that since connaître becomes connaître, nacer becomes naître. So I really like knowing these patterns. Um, I think they're useful and uh, fun. Another really interesting correlation I want to share has to do with the verb uh, to go, which in Spanish, many of you know, is ir, right? In French, however, it's not ir. In French, it's uh, aller, but um, that's not really the most important thing to talk about right now. In French, there are many verbs that end in ir that are different from normal IR verbs. For example, there is grandir, there's rougir, there's maigrir. So all these verbs actually have as their root an adjective. So grandir comes from the adjective grand, which is big or tall. Rougir comes from red, right? or uh, that's the English, the French is rouge, right? And maigrir comes from 
maigre, which is uh, skinny. So ir means to go, right? And since all these Romance languages are related, grandir actually means to go big, because grand means big. So to go big, that's to grow. So grandir means to grow. Rougir is to go red, which means you are blushing. So rougir is to blush. Maigrir is to go maigre or to go skinny, which is uh, to lose weight or to, to, I guess, slim down would be a good way to translate it, right? So this is a really interesting um, pattern that if you only spoke French or if you didn't realize that ir meant to go, you wouldn't really, uh, you wouldn't notice. The next important verb trend I want to talk about is the verb to be. So in Spanish, as you may know, there are two verbs for to be. There's ser and there's estar. So ser is used for more permanent things, for facts. So you would say, for example, uh, soy americano. I'm American. But you would say, that's using the verb ser, by the way. But you would say, yo estoy cansado. I am tired because it's a temporary state of being. So you have these two verbs which convey different meanings, but in French you only have one verb which is être, right? So regardless of um, which to be you're talking about, you would, you would say je suis américain. I'm American or je suis Fatigue, I'm tired, I'm fatigued. So it's all the same. These these are both conjugations of the verb être, uh, whereas this is from ser and this is from estar. Right? Now I want to draw your attention to the fact that être and estar are actually quite similar. So if you start with es, être here, right? notice the circumflex. The circumflex in ancient French indicated that there used to be an S after the word. For example, in words like Maître, right? If you add an S here, that looks awfully similar to its actual English meaning, which is master. Or côte, which means coast. If you add an S there, coast, right? Mestre, like maestro, master. It's awfully similar. So if you if you start from S, right? Take this RE ending and replace it with the AR from Spanish and you get estar. I think that's I think that's really cool to notice how these uh, two seemingly different verbs are actually quite uh, related. So the last thing I want to talk about is negation. So in English the affirmative is I speak present tense simple statement right I speak the negation is I do not speak. So what we have to do is in English we have to add these two words do not in front of the verb speak. In Spanish it's much simpler. I speak is hablo. Yo hablo. And the negation is no hablo. You just add a no in front of the verb. Right? In French it's a bit more uh, complicated. In French, I speak as je parle. Notice in French, the subject pronoun is uh, required, whereas in Spanish, it can be omitted without any change to the actual meaning or the grammatical correctness. I don't speak is je ne parle pas. So you have these two words on either side. So you have these two uh, words, ne and pas, on either side of the verb. So, if we actually look at this more uh, closely, je ne parle pas. This ne looks awfully similar to no, right? But actually, it's pa that carries all the carries most of the power of the negation. So often you'll hear you'll hear French people saying, je parle pas, je parle pas anglais, right? They'll omit the no, and that's because 
it's the n is most commonly seen in formal French or in writing or when you're speaking uh, formally. But in colloquial French or when people are speaking fast, they'll often omit the n because it's really the pa that's the most important in the 